on Sunrise and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com. The Victoria ISD has announced their lone finalist in their search for a new superintendent to serve the district. I will update you on the latest as the race for the White House continues. Plus, an independent review of the Secret Service is released. The details of their findings just ahead. And we have just had some absolutely lovely fall weather the last couple days. Yesterday got up to 82 degrees. Is that going to keep up? No, actually, we're going to warm up a little bit going into next week. And we also got to look at the tropics next week. All that and the weather coming up. And who will be our athlete of the week? Find out here in sports. You're watching 25 News Now Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for joining us. It's Friday, Friday. It is Friday and it's the beginning of another weekend, Carolina. It is. I'm excited for the weekend. Oh, yeah. And it's also National Alaska Day. National Alaska Day? That's a fun day. You know, Alaska is, I think it's the only state that's bigger than Texas. I think so. I double check that. Make sure California is not bigger, <laughs> because I'm pretty sure Texas is No, bigger. California. Well, we've got to double check that's, it. Yeah, I have to go double check. I'm pretty sure <laughs> Texas is bigger than California. But Alaska, though. I know. Alaska is so beautiful. I know oh, Don yeah, Brubaker has so been there a few times. You know, Alaska has got like several million lakes. A million. A million lakes. lakes. More, more than a million. It's like uh, it's three or four million. It's more than that, actually. We actually had a question of the day earlier this year on that. Well, I know it's a beautiful place, but I bet they're wishing that they had our forecast. Yeah, I bet they are wishing they had our forecast because it is feeling absolutely lovely out here, isn't it, y'all? In fact, a little fun fact for y'all, up in Alaska, the leaves are starting to change color back into the fall, kind of yellow and brown colors, signifying fall is officially coming uh, coming their way. But for us, we're going to start warming up. We're going to look at that here in just a second. But right now, if you're tuning in with us, obviously it's not nice and warm out there yet. It's actually kind of cool out there right now. 58 degrees here in Victoria, 2.6 degrees off, bringing humidity to 81%. So a little bit humid out there, not really enough to see any fog, but definitely it is a little bit more humid. You're going to notice that when you step outside. But looking at your temperatures all across the board this morning, we are all loving on those upper 50s and low 60s. Unless you're along the immediate coast, you are in the mid and upper 60s because you're right next to you can see the Gulf air mass right there. It's because you're right next to that warm 80 degree water. But like I was just saying, the humidity is up back to the 80 to 90 percent range, which is usual for us. Why that is is because we just returned back to the east, east, southeast Gulf wind, which is bringing all that humidity out of the Gulf back on top of us. And I also want to let you all know it's going to be a bit breezy as we go into the afternoon today wind gusts up today uh, today up to about 20 to 25 so be careful with that so if you're seeing your kiddos at the door this morning pack them for a cool morning but warm up to a lovely day in the afternoon we're gonna look at that coming up next carolina the victoria isd board of trustees has named a lone finalist for superintendent her name is sheila Coyasso. she currently serves as deputy superintendent for somerset isd a school district of slightly less than 4,000 students south of San Antonio. Victoria ISD Board President Mike Mercer says when interviewing her, there were nothing but positive things to say about Cuyasso. Himself and members of the board have found that she's remarkable in terms of encouraging students and teachers. She has an incredible track record for success when it comes to academics with students. Plus, she has a record of accountability, holding others accountable, but not in a not in a threatening way, more so in a, a leadership, more so in a team building, more so in a coaching up type way. The board will vote at a meeting on November 21st on her official hiring along with approving a contract. A welcome reception will be held at, for her as well. The Israeli military said Thursday it had killed Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar in an operation in the southern Gaza Strip. Troops appeared to have run across him in a battle, only to discover afterwards that a body in the rubble was the man Israel has hunted for more than a year. Sinwar has topped Israel's most wanted list since the beginning of the Israel-Hamas war just over a year ago. And his killing strikes a powerful blow to the militant group. Sinwar was one of the chief architects of Hamas's attack on Israel on October 7th. 2023. We'll go to Washington for more later. Now to some lighter moments in the race for president. The candidates appeared at a Catholic fundraiser last night, one in person and the other by video, but it didn't take long for things to take a darker turn. This morning, the presidential candidates trying to show off their funny side. Hey, what's going on? Who was that? Oh, sorry, Mary Catherine Gallagher. Mary Catherine Gallagher. I guess I just don't see the point of taking shots at myself when other people have been shooting at me for a hell of a long time and they shoot at Former President Trump you know, speaking at the Al Smith Memorial Foundation that. dinner, an Andrew annual Jackson. Catholic fundraiser in Manhattan, historically providing moments of levity for candidates. Really a pleasure anywhere in New York without a 
subpoena for my appearance. Trump was joined by former First Lady Melania Trump, who's been noticeably absent from the campaign trail. Trump also criticizing Vice President Harris for not attending the fundraiser in person. Which is deeply disrespectful to the event and in particular to our great Catholic community. Harris addressed the event in a video featuring Molly Shannon, portraying her Saturday Night Live character, Mary Catherine Gallagher. Is there anything that you think that maybe I shouldn't bring up tonight? Um, well, don't lie. Thou shalt not bear false witness to thy neighbor. Indeed, especially thy neighbor's election results. Harris campaigned across Wisconsin yesterday, criticizing Trump's comment at a town hall where he called January 6, 2021, the day of the riot at the U.S. Capitol, a day of love. Law enforcement officers were killed that day. The American people are exhausted with his gaslighting. <laughs> exhausted. Enough. Enough. We are ready to turn the page. Meanwhile, a battle of billionaires is now heating up the race. Donald Trump. Donald Trump is that Grinch, the Grinch that wants to steal your Christmas. Shark Tank star Mark Cuban appeared with Harris, slamming Trump's economic plan that would impose tariffs on foreign goods. Also on the campaign trail, Elon Musk, holding his first solo event in support of Trump. I can't emphasize enough that Pennsylvania is, I think, the linchpin in this election. And this election, I think, is going to decide uh, the fate of America. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. The findings of an independent bipartisan review of the Secret Service are now public. The panel identified numerous mistakes and specific failures and breakdowns that enabled the assassination attempt that injured former President Trump at a July rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. The new report reflects much of what was previously reported about security failures before and during the Butler rally. The acting head of the Secret Service responded to the review saying in a statement that the agency is already enacting reforms. And here are some of the top headlines you can read in the Victoria Advocate. The Decorah Club celebrates a big part of Victoria's history and a local resident speaks out against the Lavaca River Dam project. You can read these stories and more at victoriaadvocate.com. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. Let's get a look at our clock up here. It is six, almost 6.39 on our Friday morning. Here's a look at what's coming up on 25 News Now Sunrise. The White House is illuminated in pink. We learn why after the break. This morning, we're learning new details about the death of Hamas's top leader and what that could mean for the dynamics of the war. I'm Christiane Cordero with the latest on that from Washington. And also coming up next after the break in the full forecast, it's going to be another lovely day all across our beautiful state. I'll tell you how nice I think it's going to be here on the crossroads. But coming up later on Sunrise, we're going to continue looking at what's trying to form out there all in the tropics. Here's a look at what you can expect on Community Crossroads. We learn about Golden Crescent moms and quilts for hurricane victims. We hear from the Dorothy O'Connor Pet Adoption Center. And we also learn about the voter approved tax rate election. And so the school board in August set a tax rate that's nine cents higher than the law allows, which requires voters to approve that tax rate. Well, good morning, Crossroads. You look at live Aquara this morning. Still real nice out there. A little bit cool, actually, right now in Aquara. Sitting at 58 degrees. Dew point about 8 degrees off that temperature at 50, bringing humidity to a nice, lovely 76%. Although it is a little bit humid out there, so I may not say it's lovely out there. But nonetheless, it is a little bit less humid than what we usually see in the 80 to 90% range. But some of us are seeing the 80% range. Remember to look at the humidity again here in just a second. Because look at your temperatures today with some partly cloudy skies that will be picking up as we go to the afternoon time today. Also in the late morning as well. It's going to bring another nice, lovely fall-like day today. Actually, we're going to be right on par for average today. Average temperature this time of the year is about 83 degrees for us. But looking at noon time, it's actually going to be a nice, lovely low 80s, some even in the upper 70s at noon time. But in the afternoon, I'm thinking a high of about 83, which is right on par, like I said, for average this time of the year. And then the rest of us are going to see around the same thing in the low 80s at 80, 81, 82, 83, maybe 84. Some might even see the upper 70s along the coast around 78 or 79. So definitely get out there and enjoy that lovely fall-like weather before we warm up next week. But look at your dew points. You're going to see, like I was just saying, with that returning Gulf 
wind coming to the east and east-southeast. That's going to bring all that humidity back into our area, bringing our dew points back into the 50s and 60s, different than the 30s and 40s that we had earlier this week after that front. But also with the breezy wind coming to the Gulf, we still have pollen out there and everything is moderate today. Moderate UV index alongside moderate grass tree and ragweed pollen today. So I'm going to let y'all decide if you want to take an allergy pill or not. Mine haven't been as bad today, thank goodness. But look at your marine forecast, if y'all going down to the coast to go fishing, choppy waves out there will let y'all know it's going to be a little bit breezy as well with your gusts up to 25 knots. But as we go into next week, we're going to start warming back up to the low 90s. And coming up next, we're taking a look at what's going on in the tropics. Past couple of weeks here for our Athlete of the Week, we've handed out to big time football players here in the Crossroads, but this week we're heading back to the volleyball court, handing it to Victoria E. Star and Addison Azuna. Here's more for our Athlete of the Week. Addison Azuna has been a star this season here for Victoria East, eclipsing 2,000 career kills last week versus Richmond Randall High School. But Azuna did not start at Victoria East. She began her high school volleyball career at St. Joseph High School, where she played three seasons there before transferring over to Victoria East for her senior year. She talks about how this transition was from becoming a flyer to a Titan. I really only have good things to say about both schools. St. Joe is a great school, but since I do intend to graduate early, um, it was just a better fit for me to move to Victoria East. Um, but the transition has been very good, very welcoming, and I'm just glad to be here, be with this team, an amazing group of people. Now, moving from one team to another can be stressful for a lot of athletes, but for Azuna, she felt very comfortable here at Victoria East and thankful for all of her teammates. Amazing people. I have nothing but great things to say about them. This has, like, by far been, like, probably one of my most favorite seasons just because of the culture and the group of girls that we have. Besides thanking her teammates, she also wanted to take some time to thank head coach Shelby Spradley and other assistant coaches as well. Who you are as a player, but she cares about both coaches, uh, Sprad and Coach B, both care about who you are as a person, how you're doing. And it's safe to say that everyone else on the team cares too. Like, it's not just about volleyball, it's who you are as a person. And it's safe to say that they care about both. And that's great. Those are great qualities of people. Zuna has already committed to play volleyball at Texas State University after she graduates. And Coach Bradley had some final quick advice for her as she transitions over to college. College, I would tell her that she needs to just keep working hard and keep progressing and stay mentally tough. Zuna is hoping to take her head coach's advice and wants to enjoy her last couple of games in the regular season as a Victoria Titan. A big congrats again to Addison Azuna for being this week's Athlete of the Week. This is Max Williams, 25 News Now Sports. Now to the death of Yaya Sinwar. We're learning new details about where Sinwar was hiding and what his death could mean for ceasefire negotiations as security across the Middle East hangs in the balance. This morning, Hamas leader and October 7th mastermind Yahya Sinwar is dead after being killed by Israeli forces. President Biden calling the death of the terror leader an opportunity for a potential new breakthrough in ceasefire negotiations. Do you have a sense of when he will end the war, sir? Sinwar was found by this Israeli military drone hiding in Rafah. These images show his final moments, sitting in a chair, injured, throwing an object at the drone before soldiers killed him. Soon after confirming Sinwar's death, a cautious optimism across Israel with hope that this could help end the war. This is a critical, time-sensitive development as it relates to the hostages. Families of the hostages are also concerned about what it means for the well-being of their loved ones. I'm not shedding one single tear for the life of him, but now there's no central leadership. So the hostages are now left to the uh, mercy of the local captor, which is much more dangerous for them. Killing Sinwar has been one of the main goals of Israel's war with Hamas. Less certain who will emerge as Hamas's next leader and how will that impact the wider escalation in the region. Even with these major high value target operations, it almost never leads to the strategic defeat or collapse of a terrorist group. And the bigger the group, the more resilient they are. Vice President Harris said the world is better off as a result of Sinwar's death. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is expected to travel to Israel within the next four or five days. Christiane Cordero, ABC News, Washington. And that leads us to your viewer poll. You can scan the QR code on your screen to take part. We want to know, do you think the death of Hamas's leader will bring an end to the war soon? Okay, let's take a look.
Just 8% of you say yes and 92% of you say no. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part in our viewer poll. The White House highlighted National Mammography Day and Breast Cancer Awareness Month by illuminating the building in pink. National Mammography Day is observed yearly on the third Friday in October as part of National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. President Clinton proclaimed this national day in 1993. It's a reminder for all women that their best defense is early detection. The time is now 648 on our Friday morning. Still to come, Hurricane Milton could be one of the costliest storms in U.S. history. Five News Now, the Victoria Advocate and the Victoria Chamber of Commerce for a political forum with the candidates for State Representative District 30. Wednesday, October 23rd, 5.30 p.m., UHV Walker Auditorium. Hear from Democrat Stephanie Bassam and Republican A.J. Lauterbach as they buy for your vote. Well, good morning, Crossroads. We're still tracking a couple systems out there in the Caribbean right now. I'm starting out with the first one that we've been watching for the last two and a half weeks now at this point. And actually, you may notice it's an orange color now. That means the chances of development are now upgraded to 50% suggested by the National Hurricane Center. I'm still suggesting chances are at 60% because something is likely to form over the next 24 to 48 hours as we go into this weekend. But we're going to take a look at where it's going to go here in a second because, like I said, it's been upgraded now to a tropical wave Invest 95L with wind sustained at 30, 30 miles an hour around the center. And actually, I'm going to turn everything off so you can see what we're looking at here. You can see all of the thunderstorms and convection that has developed over there in the Western Caribbean, which is exactly what we were expecting to happen. All that has formed off that tropical wave that was way out there in the Eastern Caribbean earlier this week, and that has traversed all the way across the Caribbean. And now we're looking at a really, really weak spin right about there right about there right there and as I, actually as i turn on the computer the uh, latest computer spaghetti models you're going to see as promised it's going to continue moving west or west northwest into central america or maybe in parts of uh, southern mexico as well and also if you may notice there's lots of convection around this that's because it's right over the warm warm waters of the caribbean and where there's also no uh, dry air above in the upper atmosphere as well but looking at the other system that's out there it's actually now uh, approaching the northern part of the Lesser Antilles Islands, still moving west northwestward, and that one also has been upgraded since yesterday by the Hurricane Center up to a tropical wave invest at 35 miles an hour sustained wind. So a little bit stronger than this one, but still. And actually, I'm going to turn this one off. It's it's a little bit stronger, but it's a little bit less defined out there this morning. And why that is because above this storm is there's a lot of dry air above this one. But and as we go into next week, you're going to see as I turn the, the spaghetti models in on here, we're going to go into the northern northwestern Caribbean as we go into mid to late next week and then when that happens it's going to be entering a more favorable environment for some kind of development with less shear and those warm waters we're going to have more details on that next week and more coming up later on sunrise early estimates indicate hurricane milton could be one of the top 10 costliest storms in u.s history the research firm CoreLogic estimates damages as high as 34 billion dollars the bulk of the losses are from wind damage due to the unusual nature of the storm as far as water and storm surge uninsured flood damage is estimated to be about four to six billion dollars the numbers are far less than the estimated 47 and a half billion dollars in damages from hurricane Hill the new research suggests oh and still to come on sunrise news to know before you go a death row inmate has more time to plead for clemency Death row inmate Robert Roberson has more time to plead for clemency after the Texas Supreme Court granted a last-minute stay of execution. The court isn't explaining its reasoning, but the legal maneuvers leading up to the stay are historic. State lawmakers subpoenaed Roberson to try to save his life. He was convicted of murdering his two-year-old daughter in 2002. Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor writes that Roberson, quote, has made a serious showing of actual innocence. A D.C. federal judge has rejected former President Donald Trump's request to pause the release of documents from his election subversion case. On Thursday, Trump's attorney said that withholding the documents could be seen as election interference. However, Judge Tanya Chuchkin said not doing so would also potentially interfere in the election. The documents from the Department of Justice are likely to include redactions and will be released today. 
The U.S. has imposed its first sanctions on Chinese firms for making weapons for Russia's war in Ukraine. The U.S. Treasury Department accuses two Chinese firms of direct involvement in arms supplies to Moscow. The department said Chinese companies had collaborated with Russian defense firms in production of drones. It said the drones were designed, developed, and made in China before being sent to Russia for use in battle. There's still time to learn more about the VISD's voter approval tax rate. The next session is at 6.30 p.m. on Monday at Howe Middle School. And there will be another one on Tuesday at Roland Elementary and another one on Thursday at Deleon Elementary. And next week isn't the last chance to learn more. There are two more meetings on October 28th and the 29th. Stay tuned to CrossroadsToday.com for more information. And we want to invite you to experience our digital streaming service, Crosswords Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, Android TV. Just search for Crosswords Today Plus. And now let's get a look at our forecast with First Horn Storm Team Meteorologist Parker Cox. Parker, you're saying it's going to warm back up next week. Yeah, we're going to be warm right back up to the upper 80s and low 90s, unfortunately, for some that don't like the heat. But good news is you're looking live here at Victoria. We've got another nice, lovely, cool morning out there. A little bit humid out there, especially along the coast. And also, you got a nice, pretty sunrise. Look at that sunrise coming up above those partly cloudy skies this morning. But right now, if you're to go see that sunrise, like I was just saying, it's very nice out there. A little bit cool for some. 64 degrees right now in Port Lavaca along the coast. Dew point about uh, eight degrees, six degrees off, bringing humidity to 83%. So a little bit humid out there, especially along the coast because you're right next to that warm water. But look at the clouds you just saw there on the on the camera. A little bit of partly cloudy skies coming out of the deep south Texas, and that's going to continue moving northeast as we go into this afternoon, bringing us some partly cloudy skies all day long. And with those partly cloudy skies out there, look at the beautiful temperatures all across our beautiful state today. Look at all the 70s and 80s out there, even some 60s up there in the Panhandle, 65 up there for Amarillo today. But look at your low temperatures tonight. We've got a 40 up there in the Texarkana area, but down here in the crossroads, we're going to continue down the path of the mid 60s because we're going to bring we're going to be bringing back that east southeast uh, Gulf wind, bringing back the humidity and the warmer temperatures over the weekend and next week. In fact, a little closer to home today, I'm thinking a high of about 82. Port Lavaca, very nice all day long, honestly. It is going to be a little bit breezy in the afternoon, though, with wind gusts up to about 25 at times. A little bit warmer in Victoria, I'm thinking 83 degrees, also breezy in the afternoon. And a little bit warmer in Quero, I'm thinking 84 for today. So definitely get out there and enjoy that lovely fall. We're actually on pace for average fall weather before we warm back up next week. All right, thank you, Parker, and thank you all for joining us. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today, and join Shauna, Don, Mac, and Max today for 25 News Now at 5, 6, and 10.